Okay, so now let's talk about uh, valence electrons and dot structures. And valence electrons are those in the outermost shell. And they are super important because they drive chemical reactions. And we use dots, uh, dot structures to denote the number of valence electrons for each one of the atoms. And then later on, when we talk about chemical reactions, we'll draw the dot structures of the metal and the nonmetal, and we'll see how they transfer those electrons. So valence electrons are those in the outermost shell, and dot structures are a way of representing those electrons. Okay, so to save us a little bit of time, uh, I went ahead and wrote the electron configurations out for some elements uh, going across a period. And we will look at the uh, number of valence electrons for each. And I'll show you on the electron configuration how to find the valence electrons. And then we will look for group patterns as well. So let's get started on that. Uh, the first example here we have is uh, our uh, potassium. And these are the short form electron configurations uh, for each one of these elements going across uh, a period. And potassium has 19 electrons. And uh, the noble gas that is above uh, uh, potassium directly above potassium is argon so you take care of 18 electrons to that point because all the electrons are filled in their shells uh, to that point and then the next notation going down group 1 is 4s1 and so here the electrons that are in the outermost shell uh, the four shell there's just one electron in group uh, in all group one elements have just one electron in that outermost shell and so it has one valence electron okay one valence electron there um, and then we'll skip over uh, calcium I believe it is calciums in group two and all the elements in group two have two valence electrons be 4s2 so all those have two valence electrons or two electrons in their outermost shell and so uh, with the dot structure what we do is we write potassium's uh, symbol down and we will write one electron there and so these are the s valence electrons that we put right to the right of the symbol of the element uh, vanadium is in the transitional group and all the transitional groups so there are some exceptions and uh, we might talk a, bit, a little bit about those in uh, in our problem sets but the uh, most of the elements in the transitional metals those are in the middle of the periodic table have two valence electrons because they are all the principal quantum number is offset so you always have a higher principal quantum number than is in the middle of the table and so these electrons right here are the valence because they're in the outermost shell so it has two valence electrons all right and so elements in group 13 uh, we're skipping over those but group 13 have three valence electrons and the elements in group 14 have four valence electrons all right so if you look and examine the electron configuration notation for the element you have two subshells in the F you got the S and the P and so you add those up to get four valence electrons so skipping over group 15 guess how many of those have uh, five valence electrons all right in group 16 here have six four and two make six so we have six electrons there and I'm getting behind on my dot structure so let's go back up and get the dot structures for those elements that we have examples for so for vanadium two since they're both S, they fit right there. Uh, for germanium, 
here. We have one, two, and then the electrons fill singly until they have to pair. Three, four, five, six. So the ones around the element represent the p-valence electrons. Okay, and then for selenium, I'm going to write it up here. We have, uh, oh shoot, uh, for germanium, I've got too many valence electrons, right? I was doing selenium, so let's change that. So this is selenium, and it's got six, and then germanium. Germanium has four. So it'd be one, two, three, four for germanium. And then finally, uh, we have krypton. Krypton has a full outermost shell. It's in what we call the noble gas core. And so it has six plus two is eight. So it is full up of valence electrons. So let's write its valence electrons right here, krypton. The S valence electrons go there. Uh, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So uh, that's how you would do your valence electrons. Uh, group 17 here, we missed it. Group 17 would have seven valence electrons. So to kind of review, uh, group 1 elements have one valence electron. Group 2 uh, elements have two valence electrons. Group 3 have, group 13 have three. Group 14 have four. Group 15 have five. Group 16, <laughs> 16 have six. 17, seven, 18, eight. The ones in the middle all have two, with a few exceptions that we'll talk about later. So this concludes our discussion of valence electrons, and I believe in the next slides we'll talk about rules for filling electrons. From low to high energy orbitals. And so what this means is that, for example, the 1s fills before the 2s, etc. So on your quantum number chart, you know that the principal quantum number tells you about the energy of the electron and so the lower the quantum number the lower the lower the principal quantum number the lower the energy level and so when we fill electrons we fill from the lowest energy levels to the highest one the electrons seek the lowest energy state hun's rule the lowest energy configuration for an orbital is one with unpaired electrons okay so electrons fill singly in a subshell before they pair. And we did that in our examples. For example, if we had a p orbital and we had, uh, let's say, four electrons in that p orbital, they would fill singly first until they pair. And so that would be the proper orientation for p, uh, for p orbital or p4 orbital, I guess I should say. So they fill singly before they pair. And that's because that spinning electron, uh, if you don't have an electron in there, this was an orbital with a spinning electron, it has, has more energy and it repels those electrons until they have to pair up in there. Poly exclusion principle. When two electrons fill the same orbital, they must have opposite spins. Okay, let's go back to our P4 example. You can have two electrons that are spinning in the same direction. So this would be an anti-example there. So the second electron always has to have an opposite orientation. No two electrons have the exact same four quantum numbers. And a little bit later on, we'll write some quantum numbers. And that's what we're going to do next. Okay, so now we are going to talk about writing some quantum numbers. And so you can actually write a number for each electron that is in, a, uh, in an element. And uh, usually when uh, we do that, we talk about the 
quantum number for the last field electron. And so let's do that here. Um, I've written out a chart for you, um, uh, and you'll probably want to pause the video and write out the chart. And um, it goes back to our quantum number chart. And the only addition really here is the, the numbers for the magnetic quantum number for each orientation. So those will actually have a number also. So pause the video and write that down, and then we'll come back and we'll do some examples. Okay, hopefully you did that. And so let's take a, uh, an example and write a quantum number of, let's say, uh, let's do an easy one first. Let's do nitrogen. Okay, so nitrogen, the first thing that you want to do probably is to write out the electron configuration. I had to look at my quantum number chart there for a second. Three, four, five, six, seven. So we have seven electrons there. So we have two here, two there, and three in the p orbital. Okay, so the, the orbital, the quantum number that we're going to write is the last electron there, and I've got that with an arrow by it. So if we were to write that electron configuration, the first quantum number would be a two, right? So it'd be a two right there. So there's the first quantum number. The second one is a P, right? It's in P orbital. So we'll put a one there to denote the P orbital. Y'all with me so far? And that electron is right here in this orbital. So that electron is right there. So the number that's associated with that orbital is a 1. So we'll put a 1 there. And this electron is spinning in the up direction. So it's plus 1 half. Fun, fun, right? So there is the quantum number for the last field electron of nitrogen. Okay. So let's do a couple more, uh, if you don't mind. Let's grab our pen back. Let's think, where do we want to go next? Um, okay, let's do nickel as an example. Oops. Okay, so we're going to write the quantum number for the last field electron of nickel. All right. So let's draw, write our electron configuration, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, and nickel is 3d. Okay, so the electron configurations, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3d8. So all of them are filled up to this point. Oops, got one extra there. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So there is our last field electron. So the quantum number would be three, right? D would be two. This orientation right here would be, would be zero. And since it's spinning down, it would be minus one half. Okay, so we'll do some more examples later. And that concludes the fourth recording. Uh, and so I hope you've enjoyed this. And the next one will go into more detail about nuclear forces and nuclear reactions. I hope you've enjoyed this one. Thank you so much.